Hi, welcome to The EV Show. My name is Mark Brems. Today we're going to be showing you a 1979 VW Safari Wagon. This has the fixed fiberglass dome top. So let's check it out. So when this vehicle came to us, it was in pretty poor shape. Uh, it had been sitting out in the weather beside a barn in North Carolina. So the owner uh, did a full restoration on it before they brought it to us to do the conversion. What was really important to them was range, a fair amount of range, uh, drivability, and uh, power, which is what the electric motor is going to give them. So uh, let's take a look at the battery pack. So what you're looking at here is 10 Tesla modules. Um, each of these modules is about five kilowatts a piece. So you're looking at a 50 kilowatt pack right here. Um, and that's gonna give us about, we're thinking about 120 miles. Uh, once we test it, we'll know for sure. So yeah, what you have here are two Tesla modules in parallel. That would be two P, P for parallel. Then you have five more, four more of those pairs for a total of five, and those are in series. So those uh, connect together like uh, railroad cars, one after the next. So you have 2P5S, and that's the configuration of the pack. One other really neat little feature that we built into this pack is this access tray right here. This tray will pull out and give you access to the BMS main unit and the satellite unit, which is behind it. And uh, that allows you to uh, service the pack, even though the box is completely buttoned down and there's a fake floor over top of it. This is what the owner is planning on doing. So we needed a way to have access to the box itself without having to pull all of that out of the car once it's finished. And then in addition, you have a USB pass-through right here, allows you to plug in a laptop and talk to the BMS. You can program it, you can monitor it, you can see what all the cells are doing and what the, uh, the thermal uh, sensors are doing. Let's go around back and check out the motor. So here in the motor bay, uh, directly under the cargo deck, which is right above, we see all the important EV components. And the awesome thing is that everything else besides the battery pack is all contained here in one space. So here we see the Hyper 9 120 volt AC reluctance motor from NetGain. With the AC1 inverter controller right above it, mounted on a chill plate on a shelf that is positioned just above the motor. So that makes for a very short cable throw, which is good. So this space up here in the front is where the old gas tank went. It's the former fuel bay. Of course, we don't need a gas tank anymore, so what you're looking at here is other EV components. Uh, we have the heater over here. Because there is no uh, engine, no gas engine anymore to provide heat for the cabin, we now have an electric heater. And that pumps air directly into the cabin using the existing ducting. Next to the heater is the main contactor box. And beyond that, we have the main switch, which is actually the maintenance switch. If anybody is going to do any maintenance on the car, they turn that off first. And hanging from the ceiling here, like a couple of bats, we have uh, dual chargers. So because the uh, system has 10 Tesla modules, uh, we decided to put two chargers in uh, to cut the charge time in half. Uh, one charger runs by default, but if you have access to a 30 or 40 amp circuit, charging circuit, you can enable both chargers just using a knob on the dash. 
So the cool thing about these old buses is there is an access hatch directly above the motor bay, which for us is great because it provides access to all of the EV com com components, all of the EV components that we uh, might need to service at some point. So in the center here, you can see the box that contains the main contactor, the shunt, all of the high voltage relays and fuses that all need protection from the elements and curious fingers. So the charging port uh, fits perfectly in the recess that was originally provided with the stock filler cap. So what you're seeing here is a J1772 level two charging port. It's, it fits perfectly into the recess where the original gas cap was and it's protected. So let's take a look at the dash. You Volkswagen aficionados might notice there are some extra knobs and gauges. That's so we can control and monitor all of the EV systems in the vehicle. So here you have all your basic Volkswagen pulse switches, but we've added in a pulse switch here for the charger. This enables the second charger. So if you have access to a higher uh, charging, a higher current charging circuit, you can enable the second charger and cut your charging time in half. Here we have the regen pull switch. When I pull this out, it disables regen. When I push it in, regen is enabled. Here we have the reverse switch right here. So this is an electric reverse, which is in addition to the mechanical reverse on the shift lever here. We can also keep it in gear and then just pull that switch out. Motor goes backwards, car goes backwards. And here we have uh, the switch for the heater. So if I pull this out, the heater in the back in the motor bay comes on. There's a ceramic core heater there, which pushes hot air into the cabin. And so what you see here is the, the TBS Expert Pro, which is basically a state of charge meter, which allows you to monitor the battery pack. This state of charge right now says it's 78.9%. We can also look at the voltage of the pack, which is 122.3. The full pack is 126 volts. So we're still pretty high. We have a lot of reserve left in the pack. So because an EV is silent, uh, pedestrians can't hear you sneaking up behind them at the Whole Foods parking lot. So we have provided a friendly way to announce your presence without scaring them. Uh, and that's a trolley bell. We call it a ding ding. So that was the tour, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's take this baby for a drive. So, electrifying an old bus like this is just so exciting because you have so much power and it climbs hills without breaking a sweat. Um, it's really sure-footed because the battery pack is so low to the ground and it's so quiet. You eliminate all the stink and the noise. It's just a pleasure to drive. So normally what we do is, is eliminate two of the gears. We have a high and a low when we rebuild the transaxle. In this case, the customer wanted the original stock four-speed transaxle, so we kept it. And what that allows now is selectable torque. You have gear ratios all the way from the bottom to the top, and that's really helpful when you're on the freeway. Uh, a car that would have topped out at about 60, 65 miles an hour, now cruises comfortably at 65, 70. So thanks for coming along. It was a real pleasure showing this vehicle to you. It's been a labor of love. Everybody in the shop has fallen in love with this bus. So uh, see you next time.